Hey everybody, how you doing? So before I get busy today, I want to post and I want to follow up yesterday. Um, so what I was playing yesterday was something that I received from someone in the vital community. And this is uh, Reload Biosphere. It's uh, 1993 Creation Records and it's uh, the Biosphere Global Communication Remix on one side and um, Black Dog Remix on the other side. This is what I was playing yesterday. And uh, I forget the um, BC member that sent it to me, but thank you. Several things to talk about. The first thing I want to do is give say thanks to Astral Traveler 68 yesterday. I received some unexpected BC love. Uh, was right on time, Chris. Thank you. Uh, he sent me a late birthday present uh, out of his personal collection. I'm blown away because I love this man. Wolfgang Downer. Changes. This is a solo album where he's playing everything on synthesizer, and it sounds like a whole band. This is really excellent. There's just a few parts where, because of the technology and the time, it sounds a little dated. This was made in 1978. It's amazing how good and fresh it sounds for 1978. Thank you so much, Chris. This was uh, this is an amazing. The Oimels is what I want by Wolfgang Downer. I don't think I'll ever see that for real. The Oimels on MPS. Thank you so much. Chris also sent me two other records, and um, I appreciate them all. Open Circuit. This is by uh, Claude Dengine. 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 And this is cheesy, uh, but there's two tracks that save it. This is that cheesy kind of synthesizer music where you take popular hits and you make them bubbly on the synthesizer. But there's thankfully a couple tracks on here that are, um, they're like the free design or like High Llamas, really good. I also like that label, London, Phase 4. So this is a welcome collect to next, uh, addition to the collection as well, Chris, thank you. Um, like I say, unashamedly, yeah, it's a bit cheesy, but there's two tracks that save it completely. Then the last thing you, saw, you sent me, I actually already have this on CD because it's fantastic. Frederick Hand's Jazz Antigua. Antigua. This is once again something that to a non-discerning listener might think it's kind of wallpapery. This is beautiful, really well played. It's music, it's jazz played in a chamber ensemble setting, but they improvise. It's fantastic because it's the last thing you expect. It sounds all formal and stuff. And the next thing you know, they're wailing in a really formal way. This is fantastic. I don't know if you expected me to say that about this album, Chris, but this is fantastic. And this is one of those things that you do find cheap because it's misunderstood, I think. Thank you, Chris. Let's keep going. Okay, so I had mentioned some things and I people want to know more about my thoughts on the Velvet Underground. Well, first thing is I heard the Velvet Underground when it happened, not later, not after the fact, not when all the critics all got excited. I heard it for myself when it happened. My first reaction to the Velvet Underground was, what the fuck is this shit? These people can't play. Now, I was aware of the avant-garde, but I heard the Velvet Underground as a kid. I was maybe 12, maybe, when I first heard them. I was all over wanting to know about music, you know what I'm saying? But I was a kid, so I didn't know nothing about this rock and roll attitude stuff that, that is now all developed, you know, after the fact. All I know is like when I first heard the Stones, not fade away, it sucked. And the first time I heard the Velvet Underground, it sucked, okay? Now, I've, I've been listening to music a long time. I've had a lot of time to absorb the Velvet Underground. Matter of fact, I have live at K Max's Kansas City. I know every song on this album because Backworld with Joe Budenholzer, something we used to do for years was when Joe would come to Omaha for Christmas to see his parents, we'd do a show where we would recreate one of Joe's favorite albums. He's a Lou Reed fanatic, Velvet Underground. So one year we did this album. I learned every song. And someone gave this to me. I have a green vinyl copy of it. 
I'm keeping this album, but I don't like it, okay? This is really, really nothing to listen to for to my for my taste. Um, musically, okay, let me let me try to get all this out because it's like I'm not missing anything. I hear what they have to offer. I'll tell you, as a kid on underground radio, I I I sat through finally uh, Sister Ray. I finally did okay. I'm gonna go for it, and I got it. I got it. I got the. I it transcended. I got it. You know what I'm saying? The hypnotic, scraping viola, and the uh, the words, which again at the time as a child meant, I was trying to figure out what's he talking about. Except sucking on my ding dong, I knew what that was about. Once again, the words are not nearly as important to me as they seem to be to other people, and I still think like Bob Dylan said, he fooled you guys. You know what I'm saying? Words are important, but I get on here and talk every day, and I say a mouthful. So that's why the words words are important, but I say profound shit every day. I'm, again, I do. You tell me I do. So Lou Reed's wordsmithiness is no big deal to me. I do not like his voice. He can't sing. And his uh, mentality about the world is not mine. Um, Lou Reed strikes me as the sort of person that if I met him, that, you know, we would, we could get along, but I wouldn't want to be his friend. He's married to Laurie Anderson. I, I, I think I'd like to be her friend. Maybe I'm fooled. I know that Lou Reed is very intelligent, but is he, he's no fun to listen to. I've never spent a cent on Lou Reed. Never. That says a lot about what I think about him because it's, Okay, so I understand the significance historically to rock and roll, but I think the Velvet Underground are nothing to listen to. Nothing. And, uh, you know, personality does have a, a little bit to do with, it has to do with my listening. It's not that I won't listen to someone because I don't like them, but personality comes through in music, and some people's personalities put me off. I'll give another example, Guns N' Roses, Axl Rose. I wouldn't even want him mowing my lawn, much less listening to his ass. You know what I'm saying? I know you people love him. Well, love him. But they don't raid over here. There is no Guns N' Roses in this house, except in my DJ, on a DJ DVD. Uh, that's it. Okay. It's not about being a hater. It's about being uh, true to what makes me um, hum and what I like. My parents, um, I give them credit that they taught us how to appreciate music at a young age. So as a little boy, listening to music, it did make a difference whether or not people could play. Not that you had to be um, an accomplished musician for me to listen to you. But it made me more discerning in that I was listening for something else that made the music connect with me. It wasn't the raw sex, okay? I am a sexual person, but I think there's just way too much emphasis on sex in, in rock music. So that's why the blues um, is deaf to me, because it's just about getting some booty and getting mad because it went round, wrong. It's so stupid. You know, much of the blues as a, as a subject matter is just fucking stupid, okay? All right. And so that's part of it. Um, and then when the Stones come along and God, they were just horrible. I mean, they could not play the blues. You know, are you kidding me? You know, and then once again, it's just about sex. You know, it's like I was a child and I got turned on to the beauty of music and, and, and imagination and expression. So I'm listening on a whole nother level other than whether or not it's going to attract girls or if the guys are cute. Or if they're saying something naughty, I wanted to hear some interesting music. So that explains a lot about why I don't care really to this day much for the Velvet Underground. I have some Rolling Stones because, you know, that's cool. But, you know, Going Cabbage was asking me about the fall. I never talk about the fall. I bought the fall's record first single when it first came out because I read about it and I caught it. I liked it, but not enough to keep it. Since then, 
It's like the main thing going on with the fall is Mark E. Smith babbling. I don't give a fuck about him babbling. And then the other thing is he drinks, and I'm not a drinker, so I don't relate. And the music is just okay. You know, the fall musically is on a bad day. I Guys, don't take this personal. This is what I really think. On a bad day, I could make a bunch of fall records because you would just blam it out, you know. That's not a diss. I'm just trying to explain, you know. This is why some noodly prog music still means a whole lot more to me than the Velvet Underground. Like, for example, I hope that I can get the new Squack It on vinyl. I downloaded it. I love it. Steve Hackett and, and Chris Squire. Now, it's probably because of my age, to a degree, but those guys didn't phone it in. They worked hard on this new record. I love it. This is what I want to hear. Steve Hackett and Chris Squire combining the best of what they have, and it is. There's a couple of dowdy tracks on it, but mostly it's really good. Now, I'm not going to defend anything because it's that's not the point. I'm just telling you what I like. And I would much rather hear really good music um, like Genesis, early Genesis, or then the Velvet Underground. I don't care about how cool it is, you know. I'm cool, you know what I'm saying? Excuse me. I've long been pissed off at how critics have cornered the market of what is considered okay because they thought so. I think a lot of critics um, fooled us because they had the power of the pen. Not that they were really any sort of expert. Robert Christgau ain't no expert. I value my opinion much better than his. Or really anybody, really, okay? And so what I'm saying is, some of this rock and roll lore and history, in my mind, is bullshit. It's just because these people got a hold of certain records, people read them, and so now everyone is influenced by it. And that has a lot to do with my disdain for the uh, Velvet Underground and people like Tom Waits. You know, I know that Tom Waits is good, but there's a big part of him that's really phony to me, and I just don't care. Um, and the other thing that I need to explain that also, I said it earlier, but I'm saying it again, that informs my attitude about music. I'm not a romantic. I don't use music to try to woo the opposite sex. So romantic songs, artists that are all about um, um, romance and getting getting women that stuff really, ha it, I'm not interested. You know, Al Green. I don't have a single Al Green record in my house. Van Morrison. Yuck. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm just letting it out, you know. And folks, try to understand there's no reason for you to take this personally. This is just about me. You know, you can like what you want. Okay. But um, this is my this is where I'm at, you know what I'm saying? And there's just a lot of music. Like people will say, this is essential, it should be in everyone's collection. I'll be thinking, are you joking? I just finished the book Vinyl Junkies last night. Really enjoyed the book. I thought it was so amusing that a lot of the records that he talks about that he talks about them like they're really obscure and why would anyone have them? I have all those records. Many of the grail items that people are looking for, that old doo-wop and rockabilly and stuff, I don't have that because I don't want it. But a lot of that off the beaten path stuff like Guru Guru and West Coast Pop Art Experimental Band and shit like that, I got that stuff because it's, that's what I'm interested in. So I hope I haven't repeated too much, but I wanted to get that out. Someone else asked me, what about that? Well, what about this idea of um, music and edge? And I think that's the question, which is. Are music and education and everything related? I think absolutely. Um, stupid is as stupid does. And there's a lot of stupid music that I don't have time for. Even when I want to have a good time, I don't necessarily need stupid music for it. And what you listen to, whether you like it or not, tells me a lot about you. I'm not saying that you're stupid because you listen to stupid music. But that tells me something about you. And a lot of stupid people do listen to stupid music. And intelligent people, people listen to stupid music. 
but there's also something else there. You know, you cannot educate a Rhodes Scholar without the knowledge. And there's a lot of music that has no knowledge. It serves a purpose that's fine. We have the right to be entertained. But this, again, is why I think the world is such a sad state, is because um, the smart man and the wily man has figured out how to give dumbasses their bread and circuses so they, so they can get on with their nefarious ways of, you know, taking over the, uh, the bread store and taking everything and keeping it for themselves. Um, these are just some of my thoughts. And music has helped me uh, learn these things besides being in school and having experiences in the world. Music has taught me um, a lot of this perspective. I couldn't have got it if I just listened to Rolling Stones records. Or if I just listened less, just listened to um, mm, funk, you know what I'm saying? I'm not putting this music down. I'm, again, explaining where the breadth of life is within the scope of music and art, but you have to explore, and you really have to go outside of the box, and the mainstream isn't going to show you shit. Matter of fact, if anything, the mainstream wants you to stay stupid and just consume. Oh, just stay stupid and buy this. You'll like this. Uh, make us rich. I resent that. I resent that about a lot of commercial music where it's made to order. Like when I watched... Um, some music award show recently, whatever it was, and then this guy comes out. Everyone's go, oh, it's, no, not a music award show. It was the end of the Olympics, and then the guy had who has the uh, club hit Dynamite, and he, you know, and it's pumping. And I watched. I see the reaction of the audience. Everyone's up, pumping. That is Dynamite, that, that. and it's just it's it's um completely mindless, and everyone's into the group, and that's fine. But my whole thing is how can we ever get more of those masses to move beyond that stupid moment into critical thinking so we can move this planet forward because it's not going to happen without it so all that stuff has to do with um where i'm coming from with music all right and like my sister stephanie said it doesn't matter it only matters to me so if i've said something that you don't like or makes you mad it don't matter. I'm just telling you what's important to Derek. You wanted to know. <laughs> uh, there's more. Always so many thoughts on my mind. So many thoughts. Well, what else have I been playing? Oh, well, here's something. After I talked about The Faint yesterday, I went ahead and played this almost all the way through. And it's... I'm glad because it sounded way better than the last time I, I, I heard it. Um, not a whole lot of melody, but a lot of t timbre and texture going on in this music electronically. I love it. And then some pretty cool beats. I love Kurt Bakley, the drummer. I love his beat. He's got a sexy ass beat. Sexy, sexy, sexy. I had tried to bring, I had something else I wanted to bring up. Thought I could remember it. It's, it's 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 escaping me. So some other records I've pl been playing. The Telling. This is made in 1981. Don't know anything about the people, but this is way ahead of its time. Ambient, ethnic, a little bit. Beautiful. The Telling. Beautiful. Played it three times last night. Really been getting into this. Um, it's dark. Secret Steve Wilson, Grace for Drowning. I want Storm Corrosion, but I can't afford it. And I'm not going to buy a CD, you know, and I don't want to download. I really wanted to hear the Steve Hackett, so I, I did buy the download. This, I would, I mean, Storm Corrosion, I want to hear, but I'd like the vinyl. But this, it's taken me a while to get into. This is really dark, really good. Played some more Porcupine Tree last night. I got to be in the mood. And they sounded fantastic last night. Signify, and I played Fear of a Blank Planet almost all the way through. Sounded great. This is the kind of band I have to be in the mood for because there's an adolescent aspect to Steve Wilson, the way he sings, that can put me off. What else have I got out? Oh, I've played this a few times in the last week. Super Furry Animals. 
Dark Days, Light Years. These guys are fantastic. This is my idea of fantastic pop. Now, Gruff Riss was just in town, and I missed it, you know? The lead guy of the band. And Connor played with him, and I missed it, damn it. I've been playing this really good. Listen to more of this. Yeah, this is a thumbs up. Ancestors, thumbs up. A little raggedy around the edges, though, you know what I mean? As far as uh, the, the execution. I noticed stuff like that. Not that it has to be perfect, but I noticed shit like that. Now, last night, I played Nico. As you know, Nico was in the Velvet Underground. On this record, she does the Velvet Underground song, All Tomorrow's Parties. This is far superior to my ears to the Velvet Underground's version. Velvet Underground can't even touch it. This is neat. This is fantastic. It's excellent. The other day, I um, haven't had this that long. Um, Deftones. Diamond Eyes. Really like this, but it took me a while because there's a part of their song sound that sounds like... It's like, what is wrong with Cheeto? You know, there's a part of it that sounds like... Did he, you know, like, did he snort too much glue? What the fuck is wrong with this boy, you know? And then you go into it. And then it starts to open up, okay? Some music you have to, I have to give it a chance, you know what I'm saying? And Deftones is one of those bands, because when I first heard them, I said, what the fuck? White vinyl, like that. So, and again, to get back to the Velvet Underground, I've done that with the Velvet Underground, so I know what the Velvet Underground have to offer. Okay? And, um... There's a whole lot better bands than the Velvet Underground from that time period, even that never got a chance. Way better, way better, way better, way better, way better. Okay, I got shit to do today. Um, last thing I'll say is, um, I love it when Anthony Fantano gets in touch with me. You know, I, I, I just uh, I think that's great that he watches our videos. You know, I know he's watching other people's videos too, and I want to say this that. Not too long ago, in the YouTube vinyl community, Facebook vinyl community, somebody dissed Anthony just because he gave Ohm a bad review. And I thought to myself, that's fucking juvenile. Are you serious, guys, that you're going to actually have an attitude because someone's opinion is different than yours and not listen to him? Are you serious? That really disappointed me. I always learn about music from... Um, the needle drop. I, I because I can't afford it. I, I it's like I hear it and say, "Wow, that's good. That's good." And if I had the money, I'd seek some of it out. But I don't. So, I, but you know, Anthony plays a, a a neat variety of music, and you got a good ear, Anthony. Since I know you watch, and then so for the rest of you guys that are my friends that dissed Anthony because he didn't agree with you, grow up, bitches.